You're now listening to the Thousand Story Podcast, presented by Thousand Story. Welcome to the Thousand Story Podcast. My name's Nashi. And my name's Luis. And today we're continuing the conversation on wearing hats, specifically roles that we play uh, as independent business owners, entrepreneurs, or creative artists. Um, we're also going to be touching on why we stop playing shows. Yeah. Why Why don't you see me on stage? Why don't you see Luis on stage? What's going on? <laughs> What's happening, bro? Answering these questions. Yeah, What's happening? <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it. Transitionary statement. Um, yeah, so when we were earlier, we were talking about it. Um, you know, we read this article off of entrepreneur.com um, was, was saying like multitasking is a myth. Um, and to an extent, I agree. Um, I mean, I, I agree to a great extent, but, <laughs> you know, for, for me, um, when it comes to multitasking, you know, it's, it's very easy to to kind of be a jack of all trades, a master of none, um, especially when it comes to being an independent creative. Um, so you kind of have to pause and ask yourself, you know, is this at the level of, uh, is this the standard that I, I want this piece of work to be, or is this the standard mm -hmm. that I want to do this work at? Yeah, yeah. Um, and if it's not, then, you know, it takes being able to pause and identify where you can improve upon um, yourself or, or your process or your team and, yeah. and really digging in and intensely focusing on those weaknesses to help strengthen them. Um, so, you know, what my experience in the, in the situation has been, you know, for, for what I wish to accomplish for, you know, my, my goals with thousand story is over time, I want to kind of, I, w I want thousand story to be kind of like an educational well, one, an educational hub, but two, more of a space for creators to to have the freedom to figure out and identify what they want to be or what they want to do. And then, you know, find those hats. Um, so for me, in order to get to that point, I have to kind of take it in steps. So, you know, that's that's not necessarily the end goal, but that's where I want to be in, say, like five years. Um, but, you know, so for now, how do I get to the point where people trust me enough um, to be able to you know, use me as a, as a source of inspiration or use my services as a source of inspiration. Um, and then, you know, I, I was I kind of moved back to even further, you know, so I have to go to my name, you know, Najee, who is that? Why is that? Now, why is this important? And, and so then I was like, okay, how do I make this name important? Um, right now, you know, as a musician, as a, as a, that's, that's my domain and creativity was well, one of them, but, you know, mainly, um, in music. And um, for me, the hats that I have to wear are as a musician, but also as a business owner, um, because I just switched to being full time as a musician. And that is, you know, you can you can find ways to make income several ways, you know, there's passive income, um, which is kind of like things you don't have to actively work at, they just kind of make their own money, like just, investments, yeah, and investments yeah, or, or yeah. royalties, royalties. Yeah. Um, and then there's, you know, active income. So touring, live shows, mm -hmm. um, you know, meet and greets, things like that, where you're right. actively pursuing and, and gaining the income by doing a thing and then gaining the money at that point or, you know, some point later. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, so I, I had to ask myself, you know, what are my goals for um, the future? You know, wh what's an issue that a lot of musicians or artists have right now that I can focus on and work on? Um, so for myself, it was setting up an infrastructure, a business infrastructure to be able to sustain you know, living full time as a musician, you know, passively, just without doing the touring thing, without, um, you know, actively going and seeking income and just constantly being on that hustle. Mm -hmm. How can I set up my infrastructure, my business plan and model so I can have things at passively going in the background and then work on the other things that I need to, you know, to, to excel or, or to move forward in, in this position. Um, and, you know, so for me, that was the hats that I had to pick up were, you know, obviously being an entrepreneur, 
um, managing finances were a huge things. So being mm-hmm. like an accountant, yeah. so to speak, or yeah. gaining those accounting skills and figuring out how to budget, how to how to plan and, and plot for um, you know different uh, just expenses, operational expenses, um, you know, music video costs if you're going to do that, or just uh, marketing costs or things, you know, figuring out if you need an investor or not. Um, and just thinking in that headspace as the you know sort of accountant, so to speak, um, and really working and honing in on the craft. So I would spend time um, just identifying different terms and 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 topics that accountants would or or that people in that kind of headspace or you know things that people in that kind of headspace would be doing or talking about. Um, and then once I once I got to that point where I felt confident in that and that my abilities to kind of independently manage my own finances successfully and make plans without, you know, having to kind of like forego one thing or another and just make a solid steady plan. And then I moved into, okay, I have the the means to make it stable. Now, how, what, you know, what do I put out? Obviously any good content. Um, and, you know, so that's where uh, obviously just being a musician comes into play where I have to be able to, like, I have to be able to work on my craft, not, not just, yeah, you, you have to have a good product. You have to have a good, you yeah. have to go great product, you know. So being able to dedicate time to just honing that, or just practicing, mm-hmm. or just increasing your knowledge right. as a musician or as a producer, um, that's something that I'm currently working on, and just spending the time learning, you know, it, rather than you know, it's it's easy to kind of rely on what you already know and what you have and implement those skills, especially if it's, if it's profitable and especially if it's showing your results and it's like, great, you know, I can do this consistently and, and, you know, be successful, no problem. But if you want to continue being successful in the long term, yeah, you constantly have to grow. You constantly have to evolve. So that's where I'm at currently, as far as creatively, you know, I, I'm wearing the, I'm wearing the producer, musician, artist hat, um, kind of like the all encompassing artist mm-hmm. hat. And, trying to just consistently learn new things about it and learn from other people around me. Um, Yeah. So what about you, Louis? When it it comes to, I do have a question before we get to that. Yeah. When it comes to, when you're talking about multitasking being a a myth, right? When we're on the subject of of that whole situation, you mentioned that you don't really believe in that. Right. So. Yeah. Talk a little bit more. To an extent, I, yeah, I believe in it. Like multitasking isn't really a thing. You know, we all kind of prioritize one thing or another, even if we don't realize it. Um, but at the same time, we all kind of do spread ourselves thin and end up trying to multitask at least, yeah. um, or, you know, like accomplishing a few different things at the same time, at the same time, yeah. you know, just out of necessity. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so it's not necessarily, I think it's a myth or I don't think it's a myth. It's just, we, we end up, you know, for, for some of the lesser things in our life or the less important things, we, we tend to multitask more. Right. And for the more important things, obviously, we kind of focus and prioritize those. So I think it's, it's a healthy balance between finding out what's important, what can be multitasked right. uh, and what can't be. Yeah. And, you know, just moving forward from that direction. No, I think, cause, yeah, because I think the angle, um, you know, when I was reading the article or articles that are similar, was definitely about um, kind of more considering someone who is at a nine to five mm-hmm. or something like, you know, and, and actually doing that and balancing too many, too many different tasks right. at, the, at the exact same time, you know, running to a meeting while you're also answering client emails, and, right. you know, doing all this stuff. At, um, Cause I, you know, I agree and disagree. Like, you know, I, I guess kind of like yourself um, where I, I do think that sort of multitasking is definitely a complete myth. Because we are so unable to do all of those things successfully, well, all at the same time. Um, But I think, you know, picking these different hats and actively doing a big job, like multi, like it's larger multitasking, I guess, you know, in in a sense. Macro uh, multitasking. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) whatever you want to call it. Um, You know, where you're picking the job of, you know, oh, today I am a creative and this is what I'm going to do today is I'm only going to create. And then you have those days where, like, okay, you know, now I've made all this stuff and I'm about to release this. So now I'm going to be the marketer, you know, marketing right. director or the advertising director or creative director and figuring out how I'm going to get this product and successfully give it out to the people, right. you know, and kind of, and, and, and creatively do that. And then, then you also have the job of, you know, as like you were saying, like as an accountant and, and figuring out your own, finances, your own budgets, mm-hmm. setting yourself up, you know? So I think 
multitasking works when you are so honed in and focused on the specific thing that you're doing. Yeah. Because I feel like if you're, you know, if you're, it just doesn't work whenever you're, you're working on the music and then you're like, oh, I also got to think about the art. The art right. Too. As you're, you're doing the music. As yeah. you're doing the music. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think, I don't think we have the capacity to, to, to really do something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's just not, it's just not efficient. It just yeah. doesn't work. Like you just, you just hit a wall every time and yeah. then you get more frustrated. A lot of people get frustrated yeah. when they're like, I can't think of these things when they're not really supposed to be no. thinking of everything at that at moment. Time. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a wall I've run into a few times, yeah. which is why I have to stop doing that. <laughs> and I think it's, I mean, it's different. It's different for me, like in my life, because like you, you've already gone into, you dove in full time, you know, this is what you're doing. You're doing music. So now right. you have to, you know, and, and, uh, you have a manager now, so it mm-hmm. alleviates a little bit of the, you know, the, the, the workload and yeah. the stress. Yeah. But still like, it's, you know, to against you know, your team or whatever, like right. against the world, you know what I mean? And trying to like traverse that whole thing for me. I mean, I'm still at the spot where. I have not gone into this full time. Right. I'm still kind of like on teetering on the edge of going full time and still like kind of like one foot in the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I, th- I think that aspect of it, um, and I'm sure like a lot of people can relate is becomes a lot more difficult. I don't, I don't know if I should say more difficult, mm. but it has its own stresses because you have to worry about, you know, doing an actual job. Right. That is the nine to five. You're nine to five. (laughs) Paying the bills. Yeah. Paying the bills and taking all the stress from that home. You know, and then on top of that, you also have to be the creative, you know, set up your business essentially. Right. You know, and, and I think it, it, it does it definitely comes with sleepless nights. Oh yes. You know, you were there. Yeah. Yeah. I had, you were there I had not too long ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and you work some really shitty jobs <laughs> while you're doing it. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know, and then that dwindles down the spirit that dwindles down. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, it, it's, it's hard to be like, you know, work an eight hour, 10 hour shift and then go straight from that into, all right, now I can create if you're like yeah. just stupid tired. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause you're doing two jobs at one time. Well, yeah. you're doing more than two jobs at one time. You're doing, like in, in one sitting. So in to one speak. sitting. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, but I, I think for, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely at that point where I'm trying to figure out, you know, like w- how I can really hone in on the few things that I'm, that I'm, that I'm mm-hmm. good at. You know what I mean? Because I, I, um, I mean, obviously working on music and finding my own brand that has become a full-time job in and, oh, of, itself. In and of itself. I yeah. still don't, I, I still don't a hundred percent know yeah. my own brand. I know some of it, you know, yeah. some aspects yeah. I know for a fact, as far as like uh, how people view me or when they right. think of me as, as far as how they interact with me, right, right, right. you know, authenticity, yes. you know, consistency mm-hmm. as far as uh, genuine kind nature. Like these are things that I've consciously made an effort to be and do. So, mm-hmm. you know, if and I'll try, to, try to try and respond to people, try and, you know, be grateful for whenever, yeah. whenever I can and, you know, um, be fair, you yeah. know, like as far as, far as like, um, dealing with on the, on the back end, on like the business end, you know, if there's a certain agreement or like a, like a, a contract that I need to make a percentage for, I'm always trying to be conscious of what is fair, taking into consideration all you know circumstances. So you know, one person's fair might be somebody else's you know unfair. You know, it's, right. it's, it's going to be different. It's yeah, all yeah. kind of subjective, but just objectively finding kind of, or trying to at least find a neutral point. You know, and being so that's where that consistency comes in and being just you know so these are things that as far as my character i try and build around as a brand but like i said that that's taking time and yeah. that's just one facet of the brand right. you know so i'm still figuring out the whole imagery i'm still figuring out yes. the, the sound i'm right, still figuring right. out so much else and yeah. you know it's it's infinitely harder to do that if you're <laughs> you know you're at a nine to five one. or yeah. the only one you know it and and it takes having you know, it takes having other people around you to be like, well, this is what I can see or like, you know, to kind of bounce yeah. ideas off of. Uh-huh. Um, but even more specifically, just to be able to give yourself space to to figure that out because it's yeah. just going to take time to figure that aspect of yourself yeah. out yeah, yeah. and other aspects too, but especially that. Yeah. Because I think when, you, when you're focusing on your, your, your specific things, I mean, like, you know, you obviously you have to focus on many things at, at the same point in time, mm. you know, but I, I, even for myself, like I found it like, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good at, like, I'm, I'm, I'm finding my sound. You know what I mean? I'm finding where I kind of need to be. I don't know exactly where it's going, 
but I'm finding like the area, you know, the niche, like, I guess, like where, I, where I'm going. And then on top of that, like for myself, like I always think about imagery and, you know, like I've created my own like covers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I, and I actually, for the first time recently collaborated with somebody on a cover, you know, um, and I think that was kind of an interesting thing for me because before I'd always kind of just done everything by myself. Right. And I'd always been like, oh, it's super stressful, you know, because you're, yep. you wrote the music. Like, now what does that look like on a cover? You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? To people, like, what is that? And so to me, it was kind of, it was nice to like alleviate my own sort of stress and bring in a collab collaborator mm. and bring somebody, somebody else's ideas in to kind of help figure out like my brand, you know, get their opinion Absolutely. on yeah. who I am and and what I am giving off, like what kind of vibes my music gives off, what kind of vibes, you know, like the imagery should give off. Right. Um, and yeah, then so, being able to kind of like bounce off of there. So they might have, you know, they've chosen their three hats, right. so to speak. So now you guys have six solid hats to right, choose right, from, right. right? Rather than just trying to bounce around everywhere, you guys yeah. can focus concisely on a point or focus on your both of your strengths right. and make a better product for exactly. it, you know, rather than you trying to do his job or he yeah, trying yeah, to do yeah. your job. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of nice. Yeah, because when you're building building the team, I mean, you're really starting to get a lot more people who who can do, I mean, in our millennial era, I mean, we all do different jobs, you know, we all Mm -hmm. are good at different things and we can have a say in specific things, you know, uh, like the art and the creative direction Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, and I think as an, as a, as a independent creative, that's really important that you can still have a hold on who you are as a person because often times you have artists that kind of lose control in the sense of, they don't know how to work the rest of it, you know, yeah. the rest of the machine and, and and what goes into all that stuff. And they all of a sudden have people choosing what they are or who they are. Right. And, you know what I mean? Um, even down to like what kind of music they, they, they should they, make, they or, should make yeah. or play on and stuff. Yeah. So I, I think when it, when it really comes to like creative control, strengthening those, specific areas and pockets that you're really, really good at or that you just take naturally take an interest to mm-hmm. overall just it really helps you make better decisions for yourself as an artist. I agree. Yeah, you know, yeah. it gives you better get a, a better sense of uh where your root is or where you're yeah. you know how to ground yourself. You yeah. know for a fact if you have this underlying base that is confident and strong or that you know like i want this or i know this and Mm -hmm. this is at least where i need to operate if it goes better or you know farther along than that point from somebody else cool but at least we're always operating from this you know ground point yeah um and you know that's really really good as an artist to have that because then you can always know that you you know there's integrity in your music or there's or it's what you wanted at the end of the day yeah yeah yeah. And I think that comes with the choice of of saying, you know, oh, you know, I could take the deal. I could sign on to labels or records, mm-hmm. you know, or I could just decide to try to just do this myself and just do it the, the do it yourself route. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any route. Because, uh, I mean, it is in the end, if if you were to be, you know, like as big as, you know, some of the some of the bigger artists. Right. Right more lucrative i mean it's, oh absolutely because all the money just goes to you i mean you know oh, yeah. well you're you and your team you and your that, team that yeah, you've, yeah. you've, you've but, you know, yeah. modularly picked your yeah. business essentially yeah, yeah. It all which goes is nice down. yeah <laughs> yeah instead of just the people who are making decisions for you right and yeah, then yeah. and then taking a disproportionate amount of your craft you right. know <laughs> exactly you know exactly. not to not to knock people who you know take the major label route it's just a lot of a lot of people who do take that route aren't educated on that decision, right. and, you know, and it's that miseducation can come easily from just not being prepared, you know, from yourself or being or feeling like there's a weakness yeah. in yourself that you need to strengthen via this label, yeah. which isn't true. You know, most of that needs to come from yourself yeah. or most of your goals, most of your ideals have to come from you. And if you want to work with a label because you have a specific goal in mind or you know that it's going to coincide yeah. with your longer term plan, then that makes yeah. sense. But, you know, we have a lot of people nowadays who, well, it, it's kind of two part. You know, you have a lot of people who are ready to take advantage of right. the miseducation. And, yeah. and then you have the people, new artists who are just unsure and looking for guidance. Right. Right. And, yeah. and, and, you know, looking to, to strengthen and choose their three hats, so to speak. Yeah. And, and they're looking to strengthen that from these guys who are ready to take advantage of it. And it's right. just a yeah. bad combination all around. But and it's, it's interesting because like, we've never been in this 
this era of music making, of being a creative, you know, it, it, we haven't been here for long, really, yeah. when it comes down to it. Because previously, in order to make any sort of money as a, as a creative individual, as whether it's a photographer, videographer, or, you know, you would have had to have gotten a job somewhere yeah. doing something, whether that's signing a deal, working for Nat Geo, like whatever, whatever that would be, whatever right. that means, you know. But at that point, you're not really choosing what you can and cannot do. Yeah. You know, um, and so it's it's interesting because the, the the route that we have known for the longest time is is really taking this whole, oh, you know, like take the deal because otherwise no one no one will know you, no one's right. gonna, no one's gonna hear anything of you, you know, because you can't make your own way, and now that we can we make our own way and have these abilities to like, you know, make money ourselves or distribute music by ourselves or. Yeah. Uh, put our work out there so that people can see it, you know, and, and somehow find a way, you know, to uh, monetize that, you know, and so to speak. Um, we're starting to run into these issues of misinformation of, of misinformation of, of of not so not not to say weakness, but yeah. just not having enough of a a strong stronger sense of self or a stronger sense of what they know or a stronger yeah. sense of their goal yeah. and just kind of taking whatever comes along, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it definitely behooves people to if they're if they're going to go to the indie route right. to really identify yeah. their weaknesses to yeah. really strengthen and focus and hone in on their tasks and their 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 passions and what they want you know and and really just really really build that up yeah. so they can come and 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 enter this domain this yes. dangerous domain yeah. um, as a stronger person you know so they don't take the deal that's going to screw them over yeah. in, in the long yes. run yes. So I think the tip is kind of like wear the different hats, you know, see mm -hmm. what it's all about. See what it's all about. Because, yeah, prior, I mean, in, in, the, in the previous industries, you you didn't have that. You know, you were just the photographer. Right. And that's all you did. That's it. That's it. You didn't, you, didn't, you were job. just the singer. You know what I mean? That's yeah. all you did. You just you sang somebody on the else, track. Yeah, somebody else write for it's, you. Yeah, exactly. And somebody else was the brill builder. Yeah. Yeah. Writing the tracks for you. Yeah. And so, and so now just being in the space, like really because of the internet. I mean, mm -hmm. it just brought that out. Um, yeah, cause we have so many artists now, you know, so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah, So now it's even more saturated with people who are, you know, genuine artists, yeah. right. You know, but <laughs> saturated with people who really just want to make the music. And now it's up to, you know, you, you, it's, it's up to, to artists to actually like almost wake up and just be like, okay, if I want to keep doing this, if yeah. I want to keep making music, I have to actually pay attention to where my weaknesses are. Yes. I have to pay yes. attention to what's going on now because this is changing. I can keep doing this, but if I if I make the wrong decision, yeah. it could end up costing me dearly. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, speaking of, you know, it, it, it transitioning into the other topic here, um, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I stopped playing shows mm -hmm. um, was because that, you know, for me, my goal as far as as, as music goes you know, I do want to play shows, but it's not, I actually don't enjoy it as much as I do creating music, yeah. you know? So while the, 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 I guess the common conception of a musician should be, you know, do shows, yes. make merch yeah. so that, you yeah. know, that's how a it's musician has been like that for the longest time. For the longest yeah. time. You yeah. know, for me, I, I personally find more enjoyment from the making process, being in the studio, yeah. not necessarily being like a session musician, but just genuinely creating or collabing with other artists in the background. Like right. being in the spotlight for me is, is yeah. stress rather than an enjoyment. Well, okay, it's an enjoyment, but it's yes. more so stress than it is like something I strive to do. Yes. You know, I will do so because I definitely want to support the people that have supported me and give mm -hmm. them something to, you know, kind of remember. Um, but for the most part, my goals as a musician is not to be on stage. It's to make the good music. That's kind of that's kind of interesting that you're bringing up this point because you know the switch from live bands to uh, artists becoming studio music. Okay, so I mean, like back in the '60s, right, is um, when we had huge shifts in the music industry. We had uh, artists, the Beatles, right? Mm -hmm. They're the first band musicians that also wrote their own music right? right they were they were some of the first to do that and and that was huge because that never before had you know before it was brill building so you had the writers writing the songs for the singers and and the musicians mm. who just played the music and then and that's how they got them together you know so you'd have a big singer 
and then the band behind them, you know. Right. It was kind of the first time that that shift happened. So then we started seeing more artists coming out, the Beach Boys and blah, 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 who wrote their own music. And and then somewhere midpoint in the 60s, these live bands were like, okay, we're not going to tour anymore. We're done with that. Right. We're going to write music because we are artists and this is our art form. Right. You know, live music is great and fun and that's awesome. But we're trying to create pieces of art, you know. Absolutely. And so they locked themselves away in the studio. And ever since that, we've had this shift where we have, you know, musicians and artists that are kind of like only in studio. Mm -hmm. And they're great in studio. And then someone's like, yo, you should perform live. Like, yo, you should get up, you should get up there on stage and do something. And then, and they're terrible. A terrible life. <laughs> Just so terrible life. One, one good example of, well, okay, I wouldn't say good example, but one example of where I can see somebody is clearly more of like a, a studio or introspective person right. rather than like a live person is SZA. SZA okay, yeah. is incredible. You know, like uh -huh. there's, there's no, like no hate to her or anything like that, but like she, as a performer, clearly looks like it's not something she wants to do or it's yeah. like her element, you yeah. know, you know, she would much rather prefer to be alone just writing yeah. or, or yeah. with other people writing even, but yeah. just not the center of attention. You know, that's, yeah. you know, the hat she chose, it was to write and to create and to, to give yeah. moments or give a moment to, to people in, in, as far as introspection, just mm -hmm. through her, her published work rather than going out and performing the work, you know, yeah. trying to recreate it is vulnerable. It makes her vulnerable, makes her stressed, it makes her uncomfortable, yeah. you know, and, and that is, I think we're going to see more of that, honestly, which you is, think so? I think we're going to see a lot more, um, or, or I think we're going to end up coming up with more ways to, to be comfortable in the spaces that we want. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be more artists that would you know obviously right. artists that prefer being in the studio but right. finding ways to still perform right but right. still be in their it, their element yeah it's a, yeah because I, I i notice when i see like videos of like frank ocean for example mm -hmm. performing live it's never he's he's always he's very secluded mm -hmm. he's, he does not really interact with the audience right in any sort of way and i guess you know you know he doesn't do many performances Throughout the year. Right. I mean, he's very, very secluded, very to himself. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see an artist like that who is very introspective and clearly looks uncomfortable or, you know, just not in his element. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And turning his strong suit into a sort of advantage, you know, because when, when he's doing shows like that, I mean, I kind of expect to like go there feel so intimate like right. I'm sitting with him in his living room right and, you know, and, and and change the the whole stadium vibe or the stadium exactly. into a more intimate space with more people right i right, right, right. you but but definitely a more intimate setting i think yeah. we're going to see more of that intimacy yeah. which is cool yeah. you know like i'm i'm, I'm excited for that that's, that's something that I, I strive for too to yeah. create more intimacy in a larger setting right so like right. you know we, you know you're saying that you he barely does shows that's something that i um, i'm also trying to do i'm i'm minimizing the shows that I do, but I'm going to increase the quality of them. Right. Tenfold, you right, know, right. like that's, that's the goal for me. I want to increase the quality of them so much to the point where it's, it feels like an experience that you don't need to see me three times. You can just see me the one time that year. And you felt like it was, it was just the perfect, right. it, was, it was like the perfect snack or like the perfect right. meal, you know, that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. goal. Yeah. And, and I wonder if, if artists like this, like, like, I guess bedroom producers, you know, who, who were comfortable being at home and just by themselves and stuff mm -hmm. are almost being forced to do something like that. You know, I, yeah. I, I wonder, it, because really when you get down, when you get down to it, music, I personally, because I love performing live, right. I came from that background. I was always in, in bands and, and all this stuff and, and always just like out on stage. I never, ever really started off recording my music right. and then getting into it. So for me, the switch has been difficult because catching that vibe, like catching the audience, you know what I mean? Like, like feeding into the whole energy. Like right. I just, I love being a part of that. So it's been a lot more difficult for me to kind of start wearing this hat of learning how to produce my own music, right. like doing all that <laughs> stuff by myself. Cause it's a lot more difficult for me to get in, not to get into it, I should say, but like, 
to really like continually like keep myself up mm. on it. You know what I mean? To keep, like haven't heard this like this beat for like hours and hours and hours and still be all about it. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because like I, I've noticed like I've been to some shows where like you know there were these bedroom producers that I really enjoyed and. And then you see them live and it's just kind of like, like oh my God, uh, like, I shouldn't have paid. Like, you know? like you're great in my, like in my car. Yeah. Like, just, <laughs> it sounds like your music's dope, but like you didn't do anything in the show. Right. You know what I mean? You didn't do much. And that's not, that's no, like no, no, hate, no hate on anyone. It's right. just the reality. You know what I mean? It's just the reality that because they're so used to only wearing one hat, and mm-hmm. haven't put themselves in a completely different space or haven't even thought about like, oh, I'm going to perform live. How should that even look? Right. How should that even vibe? You know what I mean? Because, yeah, playing, like me playing your music in the car is a completely different experience than you me. It. Than, yeah, exactly. Than you performing it or like you performing it in front of me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, and like when I when I perform... You know, you, you've been here, you know, like the, yeah, yeah. you've seen the growth progression. Yeah, yeah. I've had to, I've had to pause and take off the, the studio hat for a second yeah. and really dive into the live aspect of yeah. the live performance. And I've, you know, I've leaned on you for figuring out how to set the mood for, for a stage or mm-hmm. like what, you know, how, what stage presence is, you know, like how to really improve upon that and create an experience that isn't the studio. Right. Cause you know, I can spend hours perfecting a sound to make a CD sound incredible. Yeah. But I, I know next to nothing about, or at least knew next to nothing about, you know, creating that or a different environment, but the same mm-hmm. environment at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in person and really connecting with my audience. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. a skill that I had yet to learn, yeah. you know, like a year ago, two years ago, even, um, or, you know, even more so two years ago, but it, it's, it's something that I had to take the time to really, really pause and, and reflect on and just yeah. grow with. Yeah. Know? I think it speaks a lot to adaptability. Absolutely. You know, being able to pivot, being able to kind of, yeah, just like roll with the punches, essentially. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and not allowing yourself to just, oh, I just do this and that's all. I mean, that's fine to do that. Right. You know, it's fine. It's great to do that for sure. Like if you're just like, I am only a producer. This is all that I do. Then rock and I'm it. cool with that. Yeah. Then do that. Then do that to the bet. Like focus on that hat. You yeah. know what I mean? Wear that hat with pride, you know, and just like, kill it um but if you're going to be multi-talented multi-faceted artist producer yeah choose choose a limited amount of (laughs) that i'm I'm always intrigued because you know like donald glover he is one of those renaissance men i guess just to Mm. say you know in in this era of you know over the internet he's someone who is um he's a musician he is a he's a rapper he he's a writer, writer, a, a comedy writer, right? A comedy writer, yeah. yeah he's he's a actor. comedian, yeah. You know, he was on stage doing that. He's an actor now. He's Lando Calrissian, yeah, which is crazy. He's he like has Rose. Atlanta, which is super successful. Yeah, you know, he's he's wearing all these. He's a producer, you know, like a, like television a producer, director, you know, so a director, yeah. all these things, and it's kind of like it. Kind of sometimes it blows my mind. I'm just like, how does this man have so much? Like time to do that, right. you know what I mean? How do, how can he wear all these hats and do it successfully without just going f- crazy, you know? Right, and it's because it, I think it's just because he took the time to, you know, you, you look at his his social media presence right. and he literally follows nobody. He is completely silent yeah. on his social media, but he's got like millions of followers. Yeah, and he said, okay, rather than take the hat of social media, you know, phenomenon, right. let me grow up, like you know, like let, let me be this type of person for these people. He said, no, I'm going to reject that hat. I'm going to focus yes. on the things that I want to do. Right. And while the, those are many things, yes. they're still specific things. Right, but right. he took the time to really focus in on those things. Yeah. And, you know, he is multifaceted. He's yeah. still multitasking technically, but he's just taking the time to get good at each thing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and that's that's invaluable. And, and it's just a testament to to how valuable that that skill right. of being able to just yeah. identify where you want to improve upon or right. identify what your passions are and really build those things one at a time. Yeah. And it's like learning a language, you, you know, it's, it's infinitely better. Like the, the older you get, it's, it's much harder to learn it. But right, you know, right. if you, if you take the time and learn one at a time and then build those skills up and then, you know, go back and refresh a review on the right. other languages, exactly. but, but build them up one at a time, it, it becomes a much easier or a much 
Um, you you yeah. become more much more capable yeah. of, of handling more information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because when you see his progression, I mean, it, it's really, you know, he was acting. He went to NYU, right? Yeah. So he was acting and then getting into rap and hip hop with the Childish Gambino mm-hmm. and, you know, doing community. So yeah. he was pure like artist, I guess, for a bit, you know, and was also writing, mm-hmm. I think, uh, that same period. And now, you know, being able to like, jump into that role it became easier i think to kind of like move into yeah. a separate role of okay now i'm going to write my own show and i'm also going to be a director you know because i've been on the other side of the camera right you know so i've learned these skills and i've learned you know how to work with actors and i've you know been kind of i'm not speaking for him at all right. in any sort of way but i guess you know it's just kind of like a testament of like okay so he wore one hat that was close to a different one you know what i mean mm-hmm. and started seeing how that hat is worn and how that skill is built up and then moving into that sort of, you know, kind of leaning on people, mm-hmm. you know, people in that field. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, I, I personally, I do that quite a bit, you know, when it comes to recording music, cause that's just not, like I said before, like that's not something that I'm really, that I was really ever doing before. Um, but I mean, I have good taste, you know what I mean? But I just have to figure out how to own it. And I've, I've definitely leaned on you right. to try to figure out my own path you know, in my own foray into that, into that whole world. And it's been kind of the reason why I, I personally have stopped playing live shows because I, it's something that I focused on a lot right. previously before I started recording music, before I started, you know, putting my music online and building an audience that way. Um, I, yeah, previously I had just focused on, okay, I'll play live in the local setting, you know, and, mm-hmm. and build my way that way. And for a while, for me, that was just, it was one, it was a great experience it was a lot of fun, you know, and I learned a lot of things about that aspect of the music industry is how to book shows, how to get, you mm-hmm. know, like how to play down at South by Southwest. You know what I mean? Like how to like really like get into the mind of like booking agents and, you know, because that's something that as, as I'm sure like for I don't want to speak for you, but like for you, you probably didn't really think too much about that when you were recording your own music. Oh, yeah. Being a veteran producer. Like, yeah, but, whatsoever. Like, you never thought about the live aspect of... I was like, yeah, I'm just trying to make this beat, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so for me, I, I kind of stopped playing live shows because I want to hone in on my sound. Mm-hmm. I can't just automatically just start playing live shows not even knowing who I am as as, as, right. a, as an artist, as an individual, you know what I mean? And... um and it's been kind of, it's been a different road of discovery, uh, a lot more intimate, I would say, mm. um, kind of figuring out who I am, where I reside, what, I'm, what my music sounds like, you know? Yeah. I mean, ultimately that's, yeah, like I said, like, like we were saying, yeah. just bringing it back home. That's why, you know, we stopped just to, to take a moment to experience the other side. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's panning out. Pretty well, I think. I think, we're I think so. Progress. I mean, I think for me, I, I, I've definitely reached a larger market than previously before. Mm, yeah. I mean, the the internet has offered, you know, my my music to be to reach people everywhere, all over the world. Right. You know, as opposed to just your neighborhood or as your opposed city. to just my yeah. And so and so for me, like, uh, what's the fun part about it is like I've already had the experience of performing live. So I'm not even too worried to the at that point. Like when I get there, you know, I'm right. not I'm not so worried about that. What I'm worried about now is pull, pulling out a good product, right. <laughs> you know, for myself. It's like basically. So I don't know. For me, like I, sometimes I feel like I work backwards. Mm. You know, it's like I I got to the point where like most people now work up until they play live. Right. For me, I was like <laughs> I played live and now I'm like working down to like so that I can work back up to play live. Which is, you know, ultimately gonna prove to be amazing. You know, when yeah. you go back to that point yeah. and you already have all of that knowledge. Now yeah. you have the entire like it's just come full circle. The whole so scope. It's, yeah. It's yeah. just gonna be amazing, an amazing yeah. performance. Yeah. Not that it wasn't already, but just like e- like exponentially more so. Right, right, right. You know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, that's it for this episode. If you have any other burning questions or topics you want us to talk about, hit us up on the site at thousandstory.co slash contact or follow us on Twitter and Instagram at thousandstory underscore. That is an actual underscore, not the word underscore. (laughs) If you want to know about our lives outside of the podcast, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. Uh, My handle is at Mr. Najee Boy. That's M-R-N-A-J-I-B-O-Y. And I go by at L Pontillo. That's L-P-O-N-T-I-L. 
P-O-N-T-I-L-L-O on Instagram and at Luis Pontillo, L-U-I-S-P-O-N-T-I-L-L-O on Twitter. And you can find that information on the website at thousandstory.co slash podcast. So thanks for joining us. Um, it's next, been fun. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been real. Next episode, uh, we're going to talk about virgins. Who are they? What are they? Where do you find them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. Next episode, what are we talking about next episode? Ah, uh, damn, what are we talking about next episode? Next episode, oh, we're going to talk about Doobie Doobie Doo. Doobie Doobie Doo. Doobie Doobie Doo. Doobie Doobie Doo. So stick around. Yeah.